Hey everyone! Today I'm going to be continuing a series I haven't been doing enough. Um, I've honestly not been doing enough of any of my basic series, but here we are. And we're going to be continuing our D&D basic series, or specifically our Dungeon Mastering basic series. So, today we're going to be talking about something that relates back to some of like the getting started thoughts, and it's a bit more of an advanced topic and thinking a bit in depth about like the games you play and the games you run, and it's not something you need to have all the answers for right away, it's something that will evolve over time, and that is the topics of uh, tone, mood, and style of your both gaming style and campaigns. So, broadly, they're all different things, but they they mean different things, and um, and they're interrelated. But um, so let's just start going through them. So first up, we have tone, and the tone of the game. Also, these definitions are kind of like my own definitions. Um, uh, they come loosely from, um, like, analysis of, like, English literature and whatnot, because that's, like, my education background, um, but they're up applicable to, um, d and and stuff. Like, if you were to think about your, like, campaign as if it was, like, a book or a story, like, uh, how would you define it? Like, what is its genre and things like that? Like, I mean, beyond, like, fantasy, because... It's hard to make a D&D campaign that isn't fantasy. If you don't want fantasy, you should be playing a different part, uh, session. Um, now, this does seem contrary to being like, you should not approach DMing as if you were writing a book, because that's not what DMing is. DMing in Dungeons and Dungeon Dragons is about collaborative storytelling. But that in with all the collaborative storytelling is something that you... Um, could analyze like a book. And what, even though you can't really, you're not, your job isn't to like create a grand overarching narrative and whatnot, like, but rather like kind of like guide it. Um, and one of the ways you can do that is in doing these three things of style, tone, uh, mood, and stuff. So if you're talking about tone and, um, Oh, actually, let's start with mood. Um, in general, the mood spectrum of in D&D is, is a spectrum between, on one end, you have very serious games where you're being like, um, like the highest end of this would probably be like, uh, both from like the very like focused and narrow and, um, uh, very intense games. This can be either be from a, a sense of, uh, being, like, very, like, hard-hitting, like, tight, um, like, strategic stuff, so it's, like, a very gameplay-focused game, um, where you're all about combat and not spot narrative, you can still have a very, like, serious tone to the game, where it's all about very tight planning and, like, height strategic things, and as well as you could have a very serious game that's all about very serious topics, like, not necessarily like grimdark, but, um, to actually make a very, like, serious topics and, like, uh, things like that. You can have a very serious campaign. Um, the, the mood of the campaign carries both into, like, how the, the topics of the game itself, as well as sessions themselves, where, Serious campaigns can be very draining and like emotionally exhausting and stuff like that. Um, and not just like for the story, but like you as a player, um, they're a little bit more tense to play and things like that. Um, kind of for that reason, I don't play them as much. I'm more, definitely more, uh, preferential to, um, the other end of the spectrum, which is more comedic and where where you can have, which on the same spectrum, like, you can have a comedic campaign that isn't talking about the story, but it's very mechanics based, and you just want to like, it's just a game about like relaxing, having fun, um, like, just like, I mean, it doesn't mean it means like less serious things, but like, you're more, um, 
you're just like, I wanna, I wanna deal bucks of damage and like, just have fun to friends and try out fun builds and things like that in a mechanics-based game, or in a um, like narrative-based game, it's it's uh, it can be like, uh, satirical or like just bizarre and wacky and just like, really fun. Like, that is definitely the mood of my favorite campaign setting that I run, which is generic RPG, because it's this satire and play on a bunch of like fantasy and uh, tropes and, and RPG tropes and stuff. And um, the thing is, is that there is no right or wrong place to be on this. Every group and every DM has their own preferences. I strongly lean towards the lighthearted side and comedic, just because A, I like comedy. Um, it's actually something that I've been kind of missing on this channel, because com you can't actually do that much comedy in ASMR, because it kind of laughter is the antithesis of relaxation a lot of ways. Like, they're both positive things, but you're not really letting, like, everything fully relax if you're, like, laughing and watching something that's comedic. Um, but, like, I, I love comedy, like, I love improv and things like that, and just, um, I, well, I think comedic games just work better. Um, I feel you can have really, and, and another part of it is that I feel you, even though you're in comedic campaigns, that means you can't ha it doesn't mean you can't have, like, very serious moments. And I feel like those serious moments in comedy are just so much more pa are so powerful and so great that, like, everything's lighthearted and then something hits and it's really bad. Like, like in a movie where you have, like, the comic relief that's, like, the hardest hitting characters that, like, hit you when they're, like, gone and stuff is when the comic relief, like, dies or is in peril. That's, that's the hard-hitting part. And, um, you get that. On the contrast, moments of, like, excessive, like, I'm not gonna say excessive, but comedy and serious campaigns, in many ways, kind of breaks the flow of it. It doesn't have necessarily the same exact impact. Like, it can be hilarious and funny, but it really can, like, unravel the narrative, and not narrative, but like the flow of the session and things like that, and it's just harder to work with them, and the amount of impact those have in a serious campaign is much less than the impact of a serious moment in a comedic campaign, if that makes sense. Um, another thing I mentioned is that um, serious campaigns and like dramas and stuff typically want more planning and more control over all the elements to like make everything hit at the right time and stuff and that doesn't work as well for D&D which is a collaborative storytelling game um like as a DM it is not your job to tell a specific story it is your job to kind of like push the characters along down a story that everyone is like in this boat together and like sure like you might be like handling the rudder or at the wheel but um everyone else rowing in their own direction and you kite them but you're not really there and it's harder to get those like beats and stuff that you need for a drama within a uh group storytelling thing where Honestly, this is actually a series I want to do in the future, which is um, D and D is essentially long form improv, a quite structured form of long form improv, and the series I want to do is actually approaching the rules of D and D from the perspective of an improv game rather than from the perspective of a um, like board game RPG, where where. Um, in many ways, the rules, like the core rules of D&D, are very much based around um, the like idea of like this is a board game with role-playing elements, and approaching it rather than being like, okay, we're going to design this improv game, long-form improv game, with 
game elements and kind of like how does that change the game and how it flows but that's a topic for another day and i'm getting off topic but it relates to this where it's like there's a reason you don't see that many improv shows that are dramas there's a reason improv comedy is improv comedy because comedy loves spontaneity and collaboration and that's what makes it so great and these are two ends of the spectrum and there's obviously no right or wrong place to be like some groups just don't want that comedy some people just want kind of like a very serious like be it grimdark or just like very intense campaign or um or somewhere in the middle where like you're just going for like more like realistic campaign like okay we're just gonna do like not generic rpg like the world generic rpg but like i'm we're gonna make like a generic rpg which isn't like overly serious it's an overly comedic it's there and we're gonna gonna fit that um and for your first campaign it isn't even something you need to like consciously think of like focus on being like i am making this a 75 percent comedic campaign like you don't need to do that but it's good to be aware of these two spectrums and kind of be aware of the effects they have on the game itself and how your players interact with the game and stuff um for honestly first time out i would aim towards comedy if nothing else for the sole reason is that intensity drains you and comedy is a lot easier to do and it will train you out less fast um Um, so, so kind of like tying into this, we have the idea of tone in a campaign and it's, it's, um, and I'm talking about this tone from a sense of a, um, what do I call it? A, a literary term and more kind of like the tone of how interactions happen and, um, the, the, and I'm talking about the relationship between the players and the DM and the players with each other where this is almost kind of like goes this then bridges the style um, and this kind of bridges the um, gap of how in charge is the DM and not in the sense of like oh the rule calling and stuff but like what extent is the DM driving the conversation and what extent is that driving that um, where it's it's kind of like it also involved tone in terms of like it is talking about like how much this campaign is going to be in character and like in character interactions or how is it be very meta outside of this like talking about strategies and player interactions and stuff and because that changes the flow of a session like is a session talking about um out of character like with the dm like talking about like okay here's this map and like we need to go here 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 and here's our plans and all that and like we want to hit this dungeon and like get these items and stuff like that and like this very like high level meta discussion um or is the game and session dominated by like character character interactions character npc interactions and stuff where most of the movement of the piece half is is uh through the interactions where um what is the focus is it character interactions as the transitions between large bats of planning and mechanics and fights and stuff or is it fights and mechanics and like talking about where we're going to go being the bridge between character interactions and once again this is a scale this is a spectrum and on one end you could have a game theoretically with no role playing and no character interactions whatsoever being like this is a dungeon crawler and like okay we're ready for the next dungeon okay we're good we're going in here and we're doing this and i don't know why you don't want to play those games where you're playing dungeons and dragons why aren't you just playing a video game um like i mean even a video game will have more character than that but um yeah and that's like go play chess i guess um Roleplay chess, how would that work? <laughs> um, but, uh, where was I? And on the other spectrum, is like, you could have a game that's all, like, honestly at that point, you're just doing long-form improv, where it's like, it's all character interaction. 
There's very few mechanics and no roles and like none of that in between out of character stuff. And it's like always in character and always going through. And I call it tone because that really changes it because it's kind of like, it's how you talk. It's how the session flows and it changes kind of like what the focus is on. Like is the focus on uh, character, character relationships, interaction stuff, or is the focus on, um, uh, the interaction between, like, players' mechanics and the DM mechanics. And that honestly ties into style. And this is a very important thing. This is probably of the things most important thing about in the campaign. And this also, this is the one where you need to pay attention to your players the most, and that is what is the style of this game. Are we going to be playing a very mechanics-heavy game? Are you playing a kind of like a strategic combat game where you're like planning and like everyone's trying to like make the best character with like fun builds and stuff, uh, or like optimize builds and stuff, and like take down monsters that are higher level than they should be, and all that, or are you trying to, is this a game where that's all secondary and you're trying to do this collaborative storytelling? And this is an important place to talk to your players, because different players have different preferences. And this is a Dungeon Master Guide actually talks about at length um, throughout all the editions, and um, it goes through like different player types and stuff. Like, magic has a similar thing, like, like, it, like, taking up different, like, player types, where you have, like, your, your Johnny's, Timmy's, and Spikes, um, and Forfoes and Mel's. Um, Dungeons and Dragons has the same thing, um, where, um, each edition kind of, like, they're, it's not as, like, neatly, like, summized as, um, like, magic has, because, like, magic has, like, these five categories that, pretty much in one way or the other. Um, and where is that things? Um, but for D&D, like, they're a bit more ambiguous and, like, people have different groupings and stuff because D&D itself is a bit more abstract of a game than Magic the Gathering, or, um, it's much more fluid and, uh, changing and open to interpretation. Um, in terms of both the rules and whatnot. So, the thing with, um, like, we're going to be talking about, like, the most obvious, like, two extremes of that chart, like, where it's fit them onto the spectrum. And you have the people who just care about mechanics, and these are, these are the players that are going to be, like, heavy board gamers. These are the people who are kind of, like, the, like, the spikes in magic, um, which are people who just, like, they want to play to win and do cool things. It's also, honestly, also, like, um, uh, uh, Johnny's, who, Johnny's like to do, like, cool builds and, like, work things together and stuff. Um, they're all on this end of, like, they really like the mechanics and want to work in the mechanics of everything. And, um, uh, that's kind of the, um, the idea of that is, or they want, if your group is, Probably majority by these these people who want like min max and like have them in combat, and most of the group is that you're probably going to lean your group to tailor towards them. Otherwise, they won't be happy. They won't like your game, and then your group will fall apart. And this is also important to think about when you're choosing players. Where like if everyone you want is wants to play a really mechanics heavy game, and you don't like those kind of games, maybe don't do that because you don't want to be playing a game that you don't like. Um, there's no reason to do that to yourself. Um, unless you're trying to do it to impress a girl, which I have not done before, totally not. Um, yeah, um, I've only gotten like two, my like, I've gotten two relationships out of D&D. &D. It's great. Okay, so you've got someone you like. Step one is you invite them to play D&D &D with you. If successful, you get to play D&D &D with them, you get to like know them better and get close to them and get better friends with them and then like you can ask them out and it's all cool and stuff. Um, so like, so if they say yes, that's great. If they say no, why would you want to date them? They don't want to play D&D &D with you. 
They're no fun. Um, who doesn't want to play? No, no one who's not fun doesn't want to play D and D. Um, maybe the ex with the exception of if they have already have like it's like their excuse was like no I'm already like playing in three other D and D campaigns. Um, then uh, yeah maybe try Plan B. I'm not best for relationships. So I don't come to me with relationship advice for trying to get the cute nerd who just keeps playing D and D. Um, if you are that cute nerd, ladies, I'm single. Um, actually no, it's it's fine, you don't actually have to tell me that. It'd be weird. Um, <laughs> I digress. Oh, words that mean things. What was I talking about? I'm having a really weird tangent. <laughs> um, d d town, mood. Types of players. That's what we're talking about. So, but then on the other end, you have the people who just kind of like want to like do the interactions and role play and interact with people. Like these people are going to be like they're going to be the theater nerds. Uh, they're going to be the the uh, the theater nerds. Okay, I hang out with a lot of theater nerds. Okay, um, I just dab a lot. That's something I have to. Um, I don't know. I was never super a theater nerd, but like. It just came to me via osmosis, and then they like built up me into like doing theater stuff, and then I did, and I enjoy it, but I'm just in self denial. Um, <laughs> but, um, gosh. Um, and they're on the other end of the spectrum, and if you want to be up all mechanics and stuff, they may not like that as much, and you might want to play role playing. If you're not comfortable doing that role playing, Maybe you choose different people or not do that game. Um, but then there's everyone in between and everyone wants to come to the game to do their own thing. There's the people who kind of like are all about uh, kind of like the, the fun of just like, I just want to like get, get really powerful and level up and like have that like just like fun experience of being this powerful character and stuff. And there's other people who just kind of want to like explore the world you've crafted and like do things like that. There's players who want to like do focus heavily lean on this like collaborative storytelling and like they want to help you with like world building and stuff and uh, and that's a great thing to do where like maybe they don't feel like playing their whole campaign but they, they want to help like design this world and come up with like new exciting characters and things like that to populate the world with and um, working with you and stuff and that's another type of player. There's another type of player who doesn't actually isn't super connected to anything in the game, but just kind of like wants to hang out with a group of people and like play a game. Um, that's actually a special case. I'm actually gonna give it a side for is that there will be people who just like a player who like wants to be in your game and um, but like isn't like super talkative and like is kind of there just to, like hang out with other people and like you know what you know how nerds are. We're, we're super awkward and. Not everyone is good, comfortable groups, and you know what? Honestly, that's really cool. And invite those people to your games and stuff, and keep inviting their games even though they're quiet and stuff. Like obviously, if they're being like so distracted to the point where like they're not paying attention, it's kind of a drain on the group. Maybe I talk with them, but um, the key there is to give them opportunities to jump in, but don't pressure them to um and where where it's it's just make them feel included like a lot of people will just like appreciate that and um it's also like fun even if someone's being quiet like they're still part of the group and stuff um one thing though if you are playing a role-playing based group game killing them only as like half a player when trying to think of like the ideal group size of like four to six because if you have a group of like you're trying to go for the group of four and you have like three people who are like kind of quiet and not talkative and they're just kind of there to be part of the group and only like two talkative players um then you're stuck with like those two players just talking with each other and not having as many interactions and these other people like kind of standing around awkwardly um it doesn't lead to the best engagement situations for those role-playing situations it can be kind of awkward um and you might want to like have another beat per person or two if you want just to fill them out because when it comes to like filling out the like in combat and stuff they're fine like 
most of the people are quite opposed to like polar weight and combat and things like that and mechanically the curves look good but when thinking about social interactions uh remember that they may not be as impactful um but still good for you for helping including a shy nerd in your group um i'm sure they appreciate it um yeah so and there's so many other like types of players and Honestly, the easiest way to like figure this out is that when you're making characters or like getting the group together, just ask them, like, ask like, what is the kind of thing you like to do in a game? Like, if they've ever played D&D before, like, that's okay. Like, ask them what they want to like to do in like computer games or RPGs or other things. Like, um, like ask about their interests, and that can like give insight to what they want. And the likeliness is, is that unless like, like me in like high school and just like built your entire D&D group out of like essentially the improv team and all they wanted to do was like role playing stuff which was awesome um you're gonna have a mixed bag of player interests and you just want to make sure that in any given session have something for everyone or if nothing else like make sure no one does like two sessions without having indulged one of the things they're into like if you have a player who really loves shopping and going into town, like haggling with merchants and stuff, like don't go like um like a a month's worth of sessions without ever ever going into town and like haggling or having like a situation where like they can like indulge themselves in that. And um just like it helps keep people interested. It also like especially if they explicitly know that you know that that's their interest, it helps them feel included and know what they want to do that like you're looking out for them and what they like um and this is something i've been talking about in on a lot of these video videos and that is the most important part of DD is just communicating with your players and keeping those uh systems of interaction together and making sure everyone is on the same page and like making sure everyone has like a similar common goal and like working towards that and really just creating a space that's like fun and really made for everyone and um communication is at the core of that which i mean awkward nerds are not necessarily the best at i mean i'm not i need to be better about that but um yeah so like the stuff in this video isn't stuff that like is like concrete things you do but it's just things to be aware of when like crafting both the campaign and the environment that happens in sessions and um stuff like that so yeah well i hope you found this useful or relaxing if nothing else and, um i have a lot more of these planned um i have some more magic basics videos coming up soon and uh here's the general D, &D basic series um I have a few topics, um, but I might be doing a kind of like soon, I just kind of like for the D&D basic series, not the D&D basic series, doing a video that's just kind of like a, just a bunch of like miscellaneous tips for players and stuff, which is also useful for DMs and whatnot, um, that like sections that don't warrant their own video. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful night. Happy sleep well. Good night and sweet dreams.